This is the Icons Compressor Collection from Softube, a collection of three of the most widely used compressors in physical and digital format since the 60s and 70s. Modeled to perfection by Softube, these compressors include the high quality analog sound while incorporating modern digital workflow, flexibility, and creativity. In today's video, I'll show you some of the best features of these compressors and how you can start thinking creatively with this fresh take on some tried and true favorites. I'll work my way through a handful of examples from a mix I just finished for a band called Burning Bodies. If you wanna check out more from them, I'll leave links in the description below. So let's go ahead and go over a familiar example of using a FET compressor followed up by an opto compressor on vocals. But I wanna bring to your attention a couple of features that are gonna really put these compressors on another level when it comes to creativity and giving a vibe to some good vocals. So I have this track and I have this guttural vocals. I have clipped gained the vocals up so you can hear it in the mix. So let's take a listen to it just dry. So let's go ahead and turn on our FET compressor, which I've already dialed in the settings with a medium attack, fast release, a four to one ratio. Let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like. All right, so that FET compressor is really grabbing all of the most dynamic sections of the vocals and pulling them back down. Then follow up with an opto compressor so you can smooth everything out from there. Sounds pretty cool, but the one thing that I really wanted to bring to your attention with these particular compressors is the drive knob. The FET compressor has this drive knob here attached to two different styles of saturation, the transformer and the FET. These are both gonna give you a little bit different flavors. The transformer is a little bit more subtle, a little bit low mid-range uh, oriented where the FET's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. So let's listen to this when I pump up the drive knob on the FET compressor. Alright, let's listen in solo. And I'll start from normal again and push that up. Trying to keep myself strong while everything is gone. It feels like never ending. So that sounds pretty cool. You can get pretty aggressive with the saturation if you pump the drive all the way up, but you will have a degradation of the volume, so you'll end up having to push the output to make up for that. I've been collecting chaos for so many years. I actually like where the knob was before around three o'clock. So I do like how each compressor has a different flavor of saturation. And what's really nice is you can use them in serial to get some really nice smooth distortion on these vocals. So let's push up the drive on the opto compressor as well. And now let's listen in solo. I've been collecting chaos for so many years. And this is great because normally after I do any sort of compression or EQ, I generally go to one of my saturator plugins like the Decapitator or FabFilter Saturn, but having these within the compressors themselves really makes it for a much more creative and quicker workflow. So now taking a listen to the vocals within the mix, they're a little bit dark just by the nature of compression. So another addition to these compressors, the FET, the VCA, and the opto compressor, you now have high frequency makeup switches, which gives you a high shelf boost, allowing the vocals to cut back through the mix again. So let's take a listen. Oh, 
So obviously the S's need a de -er after these compressors, but I really love that presence and that sheen that the high fre frequency makeup uh, switches kind of bring to the vocals after that really smooth compression. Yeah, and a final note on the FET compressor, you can use the British mode to push all the buttons in, gives it an additional layer of dirt and aggression. If you do want to use the FET compressor's uh, drive knob by itself, what you could do is flip over to the low switch, use the one to one ratio so that you're not doing any compression to the vocals at all. And all you need to do is then just drive it into the distortion. Next, we're gonna take a look at the VCA compressor on some electric guitars. Now I typically don't do compression on electric guitars just because you're gonna get some low end blooms on palm mutes, where you're gonna kind of pump the compressor in a way that's not very pleasant. Usually I end up using multiband compression to take care of that. But there's a feature on the VCA compressor and all of these compressors that is really cool, the side chain section. So you can use this high pass filter to focus the compressor, what it sees, more in the presence and mid range rather than the low end. That being said, if you have a mixture of palm muted notes and non palm muted notes on guitar, you're not gonna have to worry about that low end bloom pumping your compressor in a way that's not pleasant. As I said before, I typically don't compress the electric guitars. There's already a lot of compression from the amp heads, so you don't really need to compress them a ton, but I found that this was really nice just for catching those little instances where the volume started kind of get a little bit erratic because of the addition of the second guitar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the FET compressor on the overheads for the next two examples. First, let's take a look at the stereo link switch. The stereo link switch switches between a linked stereo compressor and an unlinked dual mono. So an unlinked dual mono, your compressor is going to react to the left and the right channel independently. This is great for a drum performance that's really dynamic, a lot of drum fills, a lot of left right crashes. This can really accentuate the performance because then your compressor is going to leave the left channel alone while the right channel is being hit with a tom or something like that. You can probably hear the difference here the best. So I'm gonna leave it linked first. Unlinked now. If you listen in your left ear, the cymbals don't get pushed down by the compression being applied to the toms as they're rolling past. So now let's go ahead and go back to the vocals for this next example, and we're going to side chain the vocals to this FET compressor that we have on the overheads. So I want the vocals to push down the compressor just slightly so that way the presence of the vocals and the presence of the cymbals don't clash. I want the vocals to sit a little bit on top of the cymbals because those are the focal point of the song. I don't know, side chaining the vocals to the compressor just made the overheads a little bit more exciting. I think it's probably just because they were allowed to be a little bit louder, a little bit brighter, while not taking away from the vocals or the guitars or anything else in the mix. So. After listening to the quality of these compressors, here are my thoughts. The cost of these plugins puts it out of the range of someone just starting out in audio, and that's okay. This bundle of compressors is perfect for the audio engineer who's looking to invest in professional grade tools. If you're looking to upgrade from your Slate digital subscription pack, this is a great place to start. Also, I can see this becoming a staple in the audio professional's arsenal because the quality of the modeling plus the flexibility and creativity allows you to get amazing sounds very quickly. These compressors made a huge impression on me when I tried them out, and I can see them getting a lot of use in all of my upcoming projects. 
And if you like this sort of content and you want to see a deeper dive on how I'd use these compressors in the context of a full mix, go ahead and let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.